I got a skin tone set of uh, pigment markers recently and after having a bit of a go with them I thought I would demonstrate how I would use the pigment markers to draw the skin on this Captain America drawing. And one of the first things that I do is I clean the white blender pen uh, because I use the white blend blender pen a lot when I'm doing any kind of picture uh, so I always clean off the uh, fine nib and the chisel nib on a piece of pigment marker paper first. Then it's time to get into the picture and the, the base colour, the first colour that I'm using here is called Light Sea Enna uh, and it's a nice kind of warm flesh tone, flesh kind of colour. And I use that to just put down a base colour uh, on the entire ear that I'm doing here first. You know, usually if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I start with a small part first of all, just to get all my blends, my mixes right, so I know it's going to work for the overall piece of work. Uh, and here I just flip to the chisel nib just so I can cover it a bit quicker. Then I go in with Burnt Umber Light, which is a sort of medium to dark kind of brown, and I probably should have put on my mid color, which you can see me doing here, Portrait Pink, first. So what I'd like to do is go Light Sienna, Portrait Pink, and then the Burnt Umber Light, but I did it the wrong way around, and uh, that's why when I was doing the ear, it didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. Anyway, with all the colors on, I start trying to blend them together using the white blender pen. Uh, and this is quite different to the way I'd normally use markers because usually with markers I blend the colors together so I would use the light colors to blend in the dark colors but when I'm using pigment markers what I tend to do is put on the color and then use the white blender pen to blend all those colors together. So I've already learned a few things about coloring this small area in that I need to apply to the rest of the piece of work and it's getting the colors correct in the right orders really. So the first thing you can see me doing here around the, the first of his eyes that you can see is adding the light sienna. Then I go in with the portrait pink which is my sort of mid type of tone and that just adds a little bit more of that kind of fleshy color around the areas that are probably going to be the shadowed or the slightly dark areas and then I put on a very sparing small amount of burnt umber light uh, again, just around the kind of creases above the eye and any areas that's going to have a bit of shadow. So in with the white blender pen and what I'm trying to do here is just use the white blender to blend each of those colors together. Uh, and the white blend blender pen does that by being a, a kind of an opaque white as well. So the thing is if you use it to blend a heck of a lot and you keep going back over and back over and back over a section, it actually gets paler and paler and paler because it's not a clear blender, it's a white blender. And one of the other things about it is as you try and blend those colors together, those colors end up leaving a kind of a residue, some of their color on the, on the tip, on the nib of the, the white blender pen, which can actually work in your favor and you can use that um, in other sections just to do sort of slightly, um, you know, just very, very light tone. Obviously, the more you work it, the more it wears off and, you know, reverts to being a white. But you'll see later on that I do actually use the color that's left on the white blender pen to just do a sort of a bit of a fill on, on another part of the skin. So over to the right hand eye, and this one is much more shadow, but again I start with my base color which is the light sienna, and then I put on a bit more portrait pink on this side of the face, uh, and then once I'm done with the portrait pink, I put on more burnt umber light. You might be thinking, well why aren't I going to an even darker shade of brown um, on this side of the face, you know, because it's such an eye that's in shadow. But I don't want to do that yet, you know, I can always add dark colors later and get darker if I need to. Uh, but at the moment I'm just putting in colors that you know are enough to show that it's shadowed and shaded and dark but aren't so heavy that it's going to cause me some problems if I need to sort of um, dial it down a little bit and go from, from a really dark you know back to, to a sort of mid-tone. Uh, another thing is as I'm doing the, the cheek section here uh, I don't know how dark or how light it really is yet until of course I've not just done his flesh tone, but I do the mask and all of the colors on the mask because the face mask that he's got, being a dark blue, will affect how the colors of the face look. Um, so I'm not too worried at the moment because I've got the mask to color in and that will give me a clear idea whether I need to make the flesh tones darker or lighter and I can always do that later on, so it's not a big problem. So I was quite happy to just use my three colors uh, to do the whole of the flesh tones on the face and just blend them in using the white blender pen. So you can see on the cheek and underneath the nose here, I've got a lot of light sienna, bit of uh, portrait pink, and now I'm going in with the white blender pen down that cheek because that one is catching a lot of the light coming in from uh, the left hand side. So I want that to be quite pale. I use the white blender pen a lot, but in a future video I'm gonna try blending colors just themselves and leaving the white blender pen out of it completely. 
Um, here you can see me doing the section underneath the nose and this was a little bit trickier as you can see it starts to get a bit streaky using the white blender pen so I had to work over this you know quite a bit in order to get rid of the streaks and, and try and blend together um, the marker as you know as carefully as, as gently um, uh, gradually as I could and it, it got a bit tricky there I'm not quite sure sometimes perhaps if you've got a lot of pigment on there it is a little bit more tricky to blend together without it streaking if you've got a little less pigment and you rely on just blending into white paper it seems to uh, be a little bit more forgiving um, as he says as he's doing this bit just underneath the the lips there this again got a bit streaky so I had to blend it back and forth with the blender pen a little bit more and like I said there is a um, a risk there because of course the more you blend it the more chance of it being uh, paler and paler and paler because the white blender pen leaves some of itself on the paper each time. At this point when you're halfway through doing the skin uh, and it's looking uh, it's looking a bit flat on parts I was you know determined that I wanted the nose to have quite a lot of depth and to stand out a little bit so I get the light sienna on and I start mapping out with the portrait pink the areas where I'm going to have shadow or quite a bit of shade so I can really make that nose look like it's standing out from the face not too much not Pinocchio style but enough that it gives a kind of rugged 3D to the face so I go in with just some little bits of light burnt umber here and then I'm going to start with the white blender pen and start down the side of the nose that is the palest so I'm, I'm sort of deliberately taking up some of the color using the white blender pen and making that side of the nose pale and then I start working around and up in order to try and blend in both the portrait pink and the um, burnt umber light and at first it's not quite gelling so you know just go in a little bit and do some you know other little blends and just some little edges add a little bit more white down that bit that's catching the light and all of a sudden it kind of looks okay it's a bit rough it's a bit expressive but I'm okay with that I quite like that and it's got that kind of sticking out depth that I was looking for Oh, and by the way, when you see me using the white blender pen and then you see me take it off the screen, but you hear me sort of like scribbling with it, that's me scribbling it on a piece of uh, pigment marker paper, uh, just a sort of scrap piece, in order to get the nib clean again. So I'm wiping off any kind of excess, any residue color that's stuck on the end of the white blender pen. I'm wiping that all off and getting it clean on a scrap piece of paper before I then come back in and use it, you know, as fresh as white as possible on the face. So I've already mentioned a few of the kind of like slightly streaky kind of effects that you get. Um, probably, you know, quite a bit using the white blender pen as well. And I think that's kind of one of the kind of expressive features of using these pigment markers. Um, I haven't seen any work yet that blends them absolutely as smoothly as perhaps alcohol markers do. But, you know, I don't think that they're designed that way. Uh, I think they have this kind of expressive painterly brush strokey streaky quality that you might say even when you know I'm trying to use the white blender pen to really blend them as you know smoothly as possible and and I suppose whether you like them or not is going to um, rely quite a bit on whether you're okay with that expressive kind of streaky look or you don't like it because you're so used to the super super smooth uh, blending that alcohol markers can give you uh, for instance my wife hates it she doesn't like this kind of streaky expressive appearance of them at all um, she much prefers the smooth blended um, feel of the alcohol markers but I actually quite like the expressive qualities of these um, and you know even though I'm here using this white blender pen trying to blend them as brilliantly as possible uh, it's kind of cool to see them when they're a little bit more ragged and a bit rougher now here you can see me adding extra highlights so everything's dried here and I'm going back in with the smooth and clean white blender pen and hopefully you can see that as it works over and picks up quite a bit of this color it reintroduces quite pale quite light highlights to areas of the face where I really felt it needed them like I said I felt the light sources coming in from the left so I wanted quite a lot of shine quite a lot of highlight down the left hand side of his face uh, and the nose I do find I have to be careful when I'm kind of working over these sections a little bit more a little bit more because it's only thin paper pigment marker paper I think is about 70 or 80 GSM so it's quite thin so if you overwork it you're going to end up pulling it up you know bobbling the surface of that paper and going through um, you know making a hole in your paper which anybody's ever done that with their work you know what I'm talking about and it's just like ah so you've got to be careful you've got to kind of just I'm using the white blender pen for instance over the top here quite lightly I'm really not pressing down very very hard at all in order to add these extra highlights and because the skin on its own really doesn't work without having the features done 
uh, at this point I decided to um, start doing the features so the lips and the eyes so I did the lips with the, the colors that I had available to me which was just portrait pink and also a magenta red hue um, so he's probably got slightly brighter pinky <laughs> lips than he should have for a man um, but those are the only colors that I had so I just put those two colors on the portrait pink was a base the magenta was a dark shadow on top oh I did put a little bit of um, the burnt umber light through just the middle to, to be the darkness of where his lips men and uh, then I blended them in using the white blender pen so I'm just moving the blender pen back and forth here blending portrait pink and magenta red uh, hue together just trying to get the kind of shadows right so you're doing a face so the top lip is usually in a lot more shadow and is a lot darker than the bottom lip and the bottom lip which is jutting out and catching a lot more light that is usually a lot paler and there's just one of those rules that I've tried to stick to throughout the years and I can't remember where I read it, it was probably in some kind of how to draw comic book magazines um, but yeah that's that's a good kind of basic rule of thumb yeah it changes sometimes with the different lighting um, but also I was just trying to put a little bit of more pale light on the left hand side without it making look like he's got lip gloss on because that really would destroy the effect of you know him being Captain America uh, and I'm not quite sure I totally achieved that non-lip gloss effect but I was happy with the depth uh, that I'd managed to get on the lips so up for the eyes, really simple just did the outer circle of the iris, the coloured part using blue and then just went in with the uh, white blender pen and just sort of got that and used that with the white blender just round and round and round so I, I sort of picked up some of that colour on the end uh, and it made the whole eye a light blue but with a dark blue outer then I figured I had to put the pupils in and for this I'm just using a Copic Multiliner um, once the blue ink had dried uh, in order to put in the pupils and then once I got the pupils in uh, I wanted to add a bit of shadow within the eyes and I do this by using my scrap paper as a palette. So I got black and I put it down on the scrap paper and then just got a bit of it on the tip of the white blender. So it's now going to be a kind of a gray because the white and the black is mixed together. And you can see it was a bit too dark at first. So I have to, you know, scribble on the, the scrap paper again until it goes back to being paler. So I just try and find a balance here by getting lifting little bits of the black um, pigment marker with the white blender pen tip and putting it on that way. And hopefully you can see that as I'm applying it to, to the eyes. Uh, the whites of the eyes, instead of the wh whites of the eyes looking very flat and white, they're now achieving a slight sort of, um, sort of slightly shadowed grey tone, which gives the eye that kind of feel of it being a sphere, an eyeball, and it's light on one side and it's getting shadowed towards the other side. Whereas if you just leave the whites of the eyes flat white, it looks weird. It makes your picture look like some kind of a waxwork dummy. So this side a little bit darker, so I've got a bit more black on the tip of the white um, blender pen, and I'm trying to do this grey on this side little bit uh, darker to you know show that this side of the face is in a bit more shadow than the other side and again it's all about trying to um, give your picture an illusion of depth uh, and this idea that there is light on one side and shadow on the other and how that affects the the, the face and makes it look 3D and when I was happy with the uh, the grey that I managed to get in those eyes uh, it was time to use a pure white so here I'm using a, a Pentel Signo gel pen and I'm just putting in a couple of little white dots on the eye uh, to show that the light source is reflecting uh, and there's a couple of just little bits as well just down the edge of the iris as well so there's the final version of the face drawn with uh, the pigment marker skin tones and a white blender pen let me know in the comments below what you thought uh, and if you want to see any more of my pigment marker videos that I've done this year, there's a bunch of links below uh, that you can click on and go straight to see those videos. Thanks for watching.